Your Humanities Half Hour is brought to you by the Northern Marianas Humanities Council. Welcome to Your Humanities Half Hour. I'm Catherine Perry, and today we are talking about a new resource available here in the Marianas for people interested in history, uh, political happenings through the years, and that is the Samuel McFeeders archives that were officially launched uh, this week past. And joining me to talk more in general uh, about the CNMI archives, and in particular about uh, the McFeeders archives, is CNMI archive. Archivist Ray Munya. Ray, welcome to the show. Good morning, Catherine. It's an honor to be here. My first time in the hum- Humanities Half Hour. Thank you for, again for having me here. Well, it's an honor to have you, really. Such an important position as CNMI Archivist. How did you get into this job? So I'm currently employed right at the Northern Marianas College. There was a vacancy in within NMC, right in the library section, and it was an archivist position. I was interested. I I applied, and I was offered the position. Long story short, that's what happened, and I'm happy. I'm really I'm happy where I'm at. I have a lot of resources that I could sift through that has and uh, that that documents the history of the CNMI. Hmm. So you've been there about a year now, I understand, in about this position? About a year, yes. About a year. Tell us, what uh, can people expect in general from the CNMI archives? Well, we have documents from the Trust Territory Times. We have books from the Pacific Collection, collection of the CNMI, Micronesian history, and also, again, to maybe a much broader, broader perspective, the, just books on... Pacific Islands in general. Mm -hmm. We have those. We have digital copies of newspaper articles from present to past. Just a lot. A lot of resources. Photos also. Pictures of previous administrations, previous governors. So we have a collection of those as well. So really, I mean, I'd say we have a lot of collections that pertain to NMI history. Correct me if I'm wrong, don't you also have some audio recordings? There's some audio recordings as well. Oh, we also have, we house the, the actual CNMI Constitution. Oh. The actual gavel, the signature by Gerald Ford, mm. President Ford. Wow. And in that photo, you have former politician, I believe, Vicente Santos, Olympio Borja. So some juggernauts, political juggernauts from the past mm. in that photo and also signing the the actual constitution. So yes, it's housed in the CNMI archives. Wonderful. And last week you had a special uh, ceremony to kind of unveil something that you've been working on. Not just you, but I, as I understand, a, a number of people before you came on mm-hmm. board. Tell us about um, the Sam McFeeders archives and the ceremony you had. It was a, there was a lot of planning to make this event a success. I mean, at least from the NMC perspective, this is the like the first time we're recognizing a historical juggernaut, you know, donating their archives to to the Northern Mariners College. So this is the first time for us. So we had to make this event special. And in this in this event in this ceremony, we displayed a lot of his archives, a lot of his records from from the past, newspaper clippings brochures from the 1970s and also some articles that he was really really interested in from I mean it dates back to the 70s 80s and even 90s so they were displayed the CNMI community NMC community were invited to to this event the lieutenant governor was there as well some politicians and it was a very very special short intimate ceremony with the with the Family of Sam McFeeders donating their archive, do, donating their father's archives to the Northern Marinas College. So, yes, it was a very, it was a very, very special event for the CNMI to celebrate. And also, 
May is Historic Preservation Month, in case you didn't know, mm-hmm. CNMI. And we felt that the Northern Marianas College could contribute to that, to May being Historic Preservation Month by having this ceremony. Mm. And it, it's, it also happened to be Star Wars Day. So it was just perfect. I don't know. It was just perfect for everybody. <laughs> Um, a number of us listening, um, including myself, knew Sam. Um, mm-hmm. Tell us a little bit about who he was in our community and also how this archive came to be. Uh, you, you sent me um, a document. It was 70 some pages and I thought it was, that was the archives. It was like mm-hmm. 70 pages or something, but no, it was 70 some pages, almost 80 of mm-hmm. bullet points of all the documents mm-hmm. contained in the archives. What a project. Yes, yes. So I guess from a personal standpoint, I've worked at the Northern Marianas College for a total of 10 years. And I do, while Sam was still around, I occasionally bumped into him. And unfortunately, I never really had a sit down with him and just access what's in his mind on NMI history. So he, his role in NMC, he was actually, believe it or not, I think one of the first CNMI archivists. So I w- I'm actually taking over his role, right, as wow. a CNMI archivist. So he was actually one of the first ones. And then after him, there were other folks after. So also he was a former, I think his, I believe his last position at the Northern Marianas College was a social sciences instructor. And he taught NMI history and current issues in the CNMI. Now I can say this for a fact that his favorite class was actually SO297, which is current issues in the CNMI. Hmm. And it was a very, I mean, research heavy class, lack of a better word. And the way he taught that class, he challenged a lot of his students to really utilize their critical thinking sti- thinking skills on what are the current issues here in the CNMI, right? So that was his baby. And whoever is taking over that class at NMC has big shoes to fill. Mm. And what was their other question with regard? Uh, oh, just like I, I understand this archive has been kind of like years in making. Oh, yes, making. yes. So maybe a bit of a history on how this project came to be. Is that fine yeah, to talk yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, So back in, from what I believe of the information I've gathered, I, th- I believe it was 2015 that the someone had applied for a grant and the grant was to help Sam McFeeders organized his records, okay? And it got approved, and the outcome of that was Northern Mar- the, the Back then, right, we had a school called Northern Marianas Academy, so the students of that, of NMA, right, they were tasked to assist Sam McFeeders to organize his records. And the outcome of the, the end result of that was, yes, it was organized well, And he was in the process of donating his records to the Northern Marianas College. And then unfortunately, in August of 2015, Typhoon Solar hit. It hit the CNMI. It was a super typhoon. And the best word to describe his office after Solar was chaos. So his records were just were destroyed, scattered, scattered all over the place, all over his office. And... It, yeah, and it was just maybe even more difficult to organize because I'd say just by by looking at all his records, maybe 75, 80% of his records were were damaged and were, were damaged, water damaged, and it was just very, very difficult. So fast forward, right? Fast forward. Up until his passing, his family, they've organized his records to, I mean, they did their best to organize it, and they separated his personal records to his historical records, and they, it was actually Sam Jr. that reached out to to Dr. Galvin DeLong Guerrero and said, hey man, hey, you know, Dr. Galvin, we have, he's, rec- you know, Sam, his father's records, so, and they wanted to donate all his records to NMC, to NMC. Yeah, College, yes. to NMC. So, of course, right? We that he had a wealth of information where mm-hmm. we were interested, and I was tasked to organize his records. So, fortunately, the sun aligned with the moon and the stars, <laughs> and you know, so I needed help, 
and Mikhail Villagomez special. Shout out to you, Mikhail, if you're hearing this. Mikhail mm-hmm. Villagomez, Arizona State University history undergrad student, right? So he reached out to me summer, actually May of last year, and asked if if there are any research projects that he could assist with. So I said, hey, Mikhail, this is a perfect opportunity for you. So we spent the whole summer of 2022 to organize eight huge bins of records. And it took us, it took us, I'd say about 10 weeks to organize these bins into categories, into categories, right? Into different categories. And Afterwards, you know, afterwards, it went from organizing the them into categories to actually what you see right now in front of you, my outline, the outline of what rec- of the records he has. And right now, I think we're at 80 pages of bullet points, but I can assure you there's more. Oh, wow. I'm only halfway there in documenting the categories just writing the name yes of, of what the yes. document so, is and uh, believe it or not right so that's the bin side of it there's more in his filing cabinet those are organized well so i'm doing the toughest the toughest part of this of archiving i'm doing that first, first and yes. then i'm making it easier for me in the future so yeah um well just, I mean, I think we're so fortunate that um, Mr. McFeeters was somebody who had a keen interest in in the development, in the current issues of his time in the Marianas, and really took the time to compile all this stuff. Yes. Because if he hadn't done it, I mean, some of these things I mm-hmm. think might not have been, there might not have been a record. Mm-hmm. Just to, uh, let's go through some of the general categories, okay. which I don't think we should list actually all of them. People are going to have to go to the archives because if we do, we're going to have to do two shows. <laughs> There's just too many. But for example, he had an interest in the Saipan economy, correct? Mm-hmm. Thing. Uh, the yes. So, man, yes, Catherine, you know, it's one thing collecting records. Like the uh, prior, I mean, even when you go to the archives right now, we have records, right? But the fact that Sam McFeeters collected sp- specific records, and these records were just his observation on maybe issues in the CNMI, Saipan economy, immigration, also just just ideas that interested him, such as maybe the creation of a constitution. So he actually came here, I believe, in the 60s or 70s, and he was interested on how the cinema came to be. So a lot of his records were on the the creation of the constitution of the cinema. Political development. Political yeah. development in the cinema, Micronesia, and to be more specific, Republic of Palau, Republic of the Marshall Islands, Ponape. So, yeah, it was really interesting. And, you know, can I share this side story? Absolutely. So the there was a workshop here in the cinema in Saipan about three, four weeks ago. And the delegation of Palau, I forgot, I forget their names, but they came to Saipan looking for Palau records. Wow. Yes, yes. So, true story. They rolled the dice. Their associate contacted me and was like, man, we're looking for these specific records of Palau. I'm like, sure. We utilized the outline that I shared with you. I And, you know, I just typed in some keywords, Republic of Palau, Constitution, that's an example, right? And boom, it hit me. It directed me to one of the stacks. <laughs> we opened it, and they were immediately engaged. They, they were. Their response was, "Man, we don't have this. Wow. Can we take pictures of these records?" I'm like, "Please, please proceed to." So the outcome of all of that. That's only one box. There's more boxes of what they're looking for, from Sam McFeeters. Mm. So. I want to say that maybe down the road, they they will schedule a trip to the archives, I think for about a week, just to look for specific documents because their court system does not have it. Their Palau Archives office does not have it. And fortunately for us, right, we have it. Mm. So I thought that was pretty cool. That was a pretty cool story. That is very yeah. cool. So they rolled the dice, they gambled because they had an hour Right, I think they utilize their lunchtime to look for these records, and they found it. 
So I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. Our guest today is CNMI archivist Ray Munya. We'll be back with more after this break. In Northern Marianas Humanities Council, Bula Guinahanya Puri Historian Marianas Zan Kutura. Sinion Soda SCCNN Futmashon Gis on Mami website nmhcouncil.org. Pat Besita Gi YouTube, Pat Facebook. Guahalok with different class in Le Blue Senior on Farm. In Northern Marianas Humanities Council, Welcome back to Your Humanities Half Hour. We're talking today about the newly opened Samuel McFeeders Archives with CNMI archivist Ray Munya from Northern Marina's College. Um, Ray, you were kind of talking about the general, some of the general cal- categories of this vast amount of documents, CNMI policy papers, Pacific Island reports, Compact of Free Association, um, F- Father Fran Hiesel's reports, really a lot. Um, And another interesting thing in the archives um, included is a lot of personal letters. Mm -hmm. And you and I were kind of chatting earlier about, you know, how communication has changed from back in the day when these letters were written to today. What are your what were you? uh, What are your thoughts? So, cinema, listen up. (laughs) We are lucky that. Family, friends who are abroad are just a WhatsApp or a Facebook messenger call away, okay? We can contact them in five seconds or less. Back in the day of writing, 1960s, 1970s, Sam McFeeders, he loved to communicate with close friends and also close family members. And imagine getting an update on his personal life, on his family, on his career, Wanting to share that information to friends and family in, in in the States, right? It took maybe a year and a half to cover everything that had happened because, like, correspondences between him and family members took, yeah, it took about a year and a half. And to get the, to actually draft a letter, send it to the States, and to get a reply back would take maybe two, three months from the correspondence that I'm seeing. So... I guess we we were, we're lucky. So you know, back in the day, that's how communication was. People wrote letters. Everything was paper based. But now, I mean, we just take for granted on this idea of communication, email, how we communicate with other people. We could utilize our handheld device, our computers to email. Auto correct. Auto correct. <laughs> yes. So everything is very formal, right? So yeah, I just find find that pretty interesting that. He was a very social person, and back then, if you were very, very social in communication, you wrote letters. You wrote letters, and the the letters, you know, that... uh, He actually typed his letters, typed his letters. And this was before the day of whiteout. Yes, (laughs) yes. So, could you imagine, like, if if I were to type a letter, I would have to handwrite them first, make sure everything was grammatically correct, and then type it out. Because when you read his letters, there were no grammatical errors. Wow. It was very, it was well written. So, uh, but the responses back, right? Some were actually handwritten letters. Mm-hmm. And at the time, it was also, it was hand, handwritten letters from his then wife, Agnes McFeeders. And she had, I can say, maybe the most beautiful cursive handwriting. And Not many people know how to write cursive exactly. nowadays. Yes, yeah. exactly. Or so, read cursive for that matter. Read cursive, yeah. yes. Read and write cursive. But she had a very... Very beautiful handwriting, and maybe I'll just share this one tidbit information on on like his letters. He would often write to his friends that you know there's this beautiful lady here in the cinema. <laughs> Her name is Agnes Manglonia, and I think she be the, she's the one. <laughs> wow! So you have letters like that, and you know the imagine just the amount of time writing these letters. It's it takes more time writing a handwritten letter to, than to actually type it out, right? So you could tell that these messages were very, very personal to him. Hmm. So, you know, fortunately, we have them with us. And I, I plan to sh- just return it back to, the, to, to his family because, you know, those are personal letters. Hmm. So... Well, yeah. another another document that kind of stood out to you, there's a couple. One was um, an interview he did with uh, Paul Tippett. Correct, correct. So, 
Sam McFeeters and William H. Stewart, he they interview Mr. Paul Tibbetts. He was the pilot of the Enola Gay, right? The Enola Gay is the plane that 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 carried the atomic bomb that that was dropped to Hiroshima, right? I yes. believe. Yes. So yeah, he was infamously or famously known for for that. So he had the opportunity to interview Paul Tibbetts on June 15, 2004. And also in the interview, you had the uh, Dutch Van Kirk and also Mr. Morris Jepsen. So it was three of them who were on board the Nolige. And yeah, he he documented, and it was quite quite interesting. The interview was actually taking place at the Northern Mariners College in the radio station that we once housed, right? So that's where the interview took place. Mm. Yeah. I think people will find um, it very interesting. Or, I mean, I think there's an opportunity here for people to connect personally Mm -hmm. with some things in the archives, history or whatever. That's true. You actually, uh, being young, also (laughs) found a personal connection in these archives. Tell us about that. So... So, yes, my name is, again, Ray Munya. My middle name is Mofnes. And I came across a very crisp newspaper article that was, I guess, fortunately not damaged during Typhoon Sodler. And it was the article on my grandfather, the late, great, former vice speaker, Sus P. Mofnes. And it was an article on May 23rd, 1995. So he unfortunately passed with Larry Hublum en route to I believe it was to Pogan somewhere in the Northern Islands and you know they, they crashed so I thought that was pretty interesting to you know read the the actual history of what had transpired on you know with that unfortunate event and also with regards to my grandfather he also had this one page I believe it was his notes because it was bullet points and it, my grandfather was the former director of the Office of Personal Management. And it was an article on civil service employees that were about to be terminated, right? This was back in the 1980s or 1990s. So, you know, ironically enough, I guess more of a professional standpoint. I'm Wait, what, what was his position on the civil service employees being terminated? So, oh, so he, his position was... He was to, he protected them. He wanted them to fight for their rights, and he wanted their he wanted I, th- I believe over four hundred of these employees, three hundred or four hundred of these employees, to do a protest up on the hill. <laughs> this was in his notes. This was in his notes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I I found that really interesting. So the outcome of that, you know, fortunately was everything went well in the House and in the Senate, and there was no need for a protest. So I found that interesting because I guess from in my professional line of work, I'm also the chairperson of the Civil Service Commission. So it was just a reminder, you know, from I'm now wearing my civil service hat that you know, we need to protect our civil service employees. <laughs> my gran- just, just by reading that, my grandfather, you know, he was a, a pioneer also here in the CNMI and his vision was to really protect our civil service employees, among other things. Mm. So... Yeah, I thought that was pretty interesting. Can I also talk about the interview with Paul Tibbetts? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, please. Yeah. No worries. So with, uh, so with Paul Tibbetts, right? He, you could, when you read the interview, you could almost see the reaction of Paul Tibbetts. He's a short dude. I'm sorry, short. He had a very short stat- stature. And he, it felt like he had a chip on his shoulder. And finally, he came out and said... That it was necessary to drop the atomic bomb on Hiroshima because it saved a lot of lives, and you know what? He never really mentioned that in previous interviews in the forties, fifties, sixties, seventies, eighties, up until his interview with Sam McFeeters. He felt it felt like he needed to say that because he got a lot of, I think, attention and a lot of a lot of people were upset. You know that. The, the outcome of the bomb right killed tens of thousands of people so he just wanted to make it clear that he's not a bad person mm-hmm. and he it was necessary to save more American lives 
Oh, so in that interview with with Tibbetts, Tibbetts talks about his time, his meeting with former president, Pres- President Harry S. Truman <laughs> back in the 1940s. So President Truman asked Tibbetts, you know, did... Did did he receive a lot of negative attention from the dropping of the bomb? And you know, Tibbetts was a professional. Said yes, honestly, Mr. President, I have. I, you know, to this day, I'm I'm getting a lot of negative attention. And then, so President Truman responded, "You tell them that the president told you to drop that bomb, hmm. you know, for reassurance." So I thought that was pretty cool. And also in that interview, he met with, I think it was it was General Fuchida. From Japan, the J- Japanese Imperial Army, right back in the f- 60s, they met in Florida. And uh, Fuchida went over to Tibbetts and was like, Do you, you don't know who I am, right? No, I don't. And so they had a conversation. And uh, Fuchida said, I'm the general that led the attack on Pearl Harbor. And when you drop, and when you drop that bomb in Hiroshima, that was a very good call. It saved a lot of American lives. So... I think the perspective also is that um, had there been a land invasion, there mm-hmm. would have been tremendous, many more losses more on losses. both sides. Both Re- sides. Yes, yes. Not just American. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, I think from what I've read and yeah. heard before, that's the sentiment behind yeah. that. Yeah. And uh, well, more. That's deep. Yeah, exactly. So more, you can argue, again, I'm. Um, you can argue that dropping the bomb saved more lives and saves more money, you know, for the for both sides. Yes. Mm. So that was basically the outcome of the of the interview, and it, I felt that that Tibbetts needed to come out and say that. Mm-hmm. So it's documented, and we have them in the archives. So if people are interested in either accessing that or seeing what else is. There is in the in the archives. How can they access it? So I rec- so with the Sammy Feeders collection, I'm still in the process of catalog- cataloging and organizing them. It's gonna take a while for to complete that. But if they're really interested on something specific, we could schedule a time and date to to see what Sammy Feeders has. So if CNMI, if you're interested. I recommend you contact me via email, raymond.munia at marianas.edu, and we'll schedule an appropriate time and day to have access to Sam's records. Awesome. Should, should, should you be interested. <laughs> Ray, really want to thank you for your work and for sharing with us today about this project. Any final thoughts before we go? Well, right now I just want to say thank you to Sam's family for having for basically handing over his, his their father's records. I want to take this opportunity to thank thank Dr. Galvin de Leon Guerrero, Jedi Grandmaster. President of the college Pre- also yes, on the side. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank him for planting that seed in my mind to, like, we got to do something, you know. We have to honor... Sam's legacy so I really took that to heart when imagine a year of planning a year of doing this and it worked out well and we picked I believe we picked a perfect date to have this ceremony I want to thank thank the NMC family for helping me with this event I mean the just the time and dedication to let the, to have the ceremony our work study, Mikhail Villa Gomez. Just, I, I, I couldn't do this alone. That's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, thank you to, to everybody for that. Well, thank you, Ray. Mm-hmm. Thank you, thank you Catherine. <laughs> We've been chatting today with CNMI archivist Ray Munya about the Samuel McFeeders archives available at Northern Marianas College. If you get a chance, visit the archives and see what they have. This has been Your Humanities Half Hour. I'm Catherine Perry. This program was supported by a We the People grant awarded to the Northern Marianas Humanities Council from the National Endowment for the Humanities. Any views, findings, conclusions, or recommendations expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily represent those of the National Endowment for the Humanities or the Northern Marianas Humanities Council.